Mitchell to be the Board Commission appointment. Item number one would be City Council's nomination to the Morristown Utility Commission for a five-year term to expire August the 1st, 2016. Uh, this time, Chair, will take nominations. I nominate George the other. Mr. McGuffin is nominated. Are there any further nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. Is there any discussion? I'd like to make a comment there, if you don't care. Um, no, I asked Mr. Jesse, and I asked you a question last time, and I, I think I possibly asked you the wrong question. So I'm going to read this. Have you read it? Did you read this? I laid you a copy there. Uh, I glanced at it. Okay. When I came in. okay. Yes. So I'm going to read this, then I'm going to ask you the question again. Okay. okay. Because uh, I asked you in the wrong way last time, I thought. Okay. Anyway, MUS Private Act 2001. Several MUC issues were put on the ballot as a single question in 2001. This MUC question was sent to the voters by council and the state legislator to let the voters decide. The MUC question included what the MUC itself labeled an open process for selection of board members. MUS put vote for signs at the MUS put vote for signs at the MUS office. Main and Jackson and in the beds of MUS trucks. Sid Hemsley, the attorney in Impasse Senior Legal Counsel, and the state comptroller have opted that governmental entities cannot spend public funds to support or oppose a referendum issue. MUS paid for political ads in the newspaper. Described in the 2001 MUC Private Act included establishing an open process for selection of board members. Sid Hemsley, attorney and MTAS senior legal consultant, and the state comptroller have opted that governmental entities cannot spend public funds to support or oppose a referendum issue. And here is a picture of those signs, Mr. Chancey says vote for. I didn't have that show you last time. 2001 referendum results. MUS introduced and supported all the 2001 private act changes. 2001, 72% of the voters, 3,202 people, voted for all the 2001 private act changes. In 2012, Representative Don Miller and Senator Steve Sutherland, at the urging of five council members, changed state law and the former process that the people had voted for, and that had worked successfully until five council members rejected 21 people's nominated by the mayor from the list provided by MUC because these five decided that one person was preferred over all the others. And my question, Dick, is uh, do you agree with Sid Hemsley, the attorney, MTAS Senior Legal Counsel, and the State Comptroller about this, this agreement? Yeah, Mr. Brooks, I would say that at the time uh, this went on, which has been about 12, 12 years ago, I'm not familiar with this sign, but there would be a distinction between the commission providing information about the referendum or uh, advocating one side or the other on the referendum. The commission took the position that the uh, materials, and I think there were some articles in the newspaper about it, was informational so that the public would understand what effect these changes would have. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's a general statement saying that a municipality can uh, take one side or the other uh, in a referendum. But those are the circumstances, as I recall, and that was their position. But would you agree with this statement by C.D. Hemsley and the uh, Comptroller that, you know, you cannot ask to vote yes for this, you know, well, I, and you saw I think the sign, I would agree you saw with, the information in the paper, you know. I, I would agree with what I just said. I don't know the circumstances of, uh, I've never seen this picture before, and I don't recall the signs uh, if it were 12 years ago. Uh, but it can. I mean, the municipality can, and the commission could uh, improperly advocate a particular side of the referendum. 
But again, there's a fine line between doing that and actually furnishing the citizens who are going to be voting with accurate information on the effect of passage or non-passage of a referendum. So you're saying, sir, that vote yes for this is is okay? I'm not saying that. I'm saying I've never seen these pictures nor that sign. I don't know who did them. I mean, I, I take you your word you believe the well, uh, if, if commission have, did, but I, I don't want to comment on something I'm well, speculating about. Will you give me a comment later, maybe? I mean, will you research this? Yes, I mean, I'll be glad you, to. Uh, let me, uh, I brought all this information to you a few months ago. You saw the signs and the newspaper articles and all. I brought it to you. I don't recall. Discussed it. I don't recall the newspaper articles, but I, I don't doubt that you brought it by. But I do. Okay. But maybe in the future, will you give me a you know check it out? And see I it will. Out. The comptroller says it's wrong, you know, and the city of says it's wrong, and I just want you to you know check it out. If it's wrong, and, you know, let me know. If it's wrong. Thank I'll be, you. I'll, I'll be glad to. Sir. Thank you. Is there any other discussion by council? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to appoint uh, George McGuffin to a term expiring August 1st, 2016. Do we have a motion? I make that motion. We have a motion by Councilmember Bell. Do we have a second? We have a second by Councilmember Sanger. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please enter your vote. Five yeas, two nays. Mr. McGuffin is now going back to the utility. 